We respectfully request the Sangha great virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please send the wonderful Dharma will to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sananto Suchedo Ye Lahudi Sami O San Putosye. Namo Dadakha to Ya Daja Lahade Tamil Tamboda Toa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dhamma in a hundred thousand million eons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Wu shang sheng sheng wei miao fa ba he qian wan jie nan zao yu wo jin jian wen de shou chi O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Hui Nang, Great Master Shenhua, and all good monks and nuns and all good no advisors, Amitofo, Chu Fo Pu Sa, Liu Zu Shi Fu Shang Ren, Go Wei Chu Chia Ren, Go Wei Shang Chi Shi, Amitofo. Chư Phật Bồ Tát kính thưa lục tổ và thượng đế hóa quý thầy cô và quý vị thiện trí thức ở nhiều đạo Phật. Hello everyone. Today is uh, the last Saturday of November 2022. We are here in Wei Mountain Temple uh, to continue discussing the Six Patriarch Sutra. Thank you all for coming. We are on slide. 246 is near the end of chapter 2 about the teaching on prasya, the, the six patriarchs version. It's a shortened version of how to develop, to develop prasya in our practice, which is actually the uh, goal for all Chan practices. When we practice Chan, is in order to develop samadhi and thus unfold our prasya wisdom. And here, if this is a very important part of this, uh, this uh, sutra, he uh, taught us how to um, pres- uh, make uh, this uh, prasya development uh, happen a lot quicker. Uh, and typically, the interesting thing about, I think, about the greater patriarchs is that they gave us uh, the insights into how to do it, and in particular for Master Shenhua and in a greater extent Master Six Petra, is that they taught us uh, in particular the things to avoid uh, doing 
uh, that will inhibit our unfolding of practical wisdom, which is most teachers don't have. Okay, we are in 246 Sutra text. Proper views are transcendental, deviant views are all mundane. Deviant are proper, pro completely destroyed, the body nature appears spontaneously. Okay, so he says, uh, in order for you to transcend this world, you need to develop proper views. Uh, because when you learn the proper views from the Orthodox Buddhism, uh, this will have direct effect of helping you escape all the suffering and attain bliss. And not just transcend this world here from a, just a non-Buddhist perspective, like for example, the other non-Buddhist spiritual practices also proclaim they are transcendental. Actually, they only talk about transcending the desire realm where we reside. Whereas the Buddhism also brings you to the top of the world, transcends this desire realm, the form realm, the formless realm, and way beyond. Okay, so this transcendental here refers to get out of the wheel, because only in Buddhism can you find the knowledge and the wisdom and the technology and the track record of practitioners who have transcended the world. And in contrast, he says, living views are all mundane, meaning that if you don't believe, you have deviant views, meaning you don't believe in cause and effect, uh, then uh, you will be bound to this world. Uh, meaning that, you see, what's hidden meaning here is that if you harbor certain worldly views, uh, this is what prevents you from opening your true wisdom. This is so damaging. This is because these views here, when you uh, harbor such deviant views, then you will not be able to transcend this world. You cannot escape the wheel of suffering, the recurring wheel, the wheel of recurring incarnation. Okay, uh, so. What happened is that from a teacher perspective, uh, you know, teachers who have not transcended the world will tend to insert deviant views in their teachings. They may be wearing robes like me, okay? but, uh, but uh, they, in their teachings, they, because they have not transcended the views, uh, it's reflected in their interpretation of the Buddhist teachings. So that's why it's very important for you, monks and nuns, uh, not to dispense the teaching uh, too soon. Okay? When I was at Master Shinwa's temple, we were trained to speak the Dharma, so we were given the chance to speak the Dharma uh, quite often. Uh, however, uh, However, it happens uh, at his temples because he's willing to uh, take uh, assume responsibility for your deviant views. When you speak the Dharma and you express deviant views, uh, it uh, causes a lot of problems for you. You fall to lower realms. So that's why, uh, that's why when we spoke Dharma in Master Shinwa's temples, he was supporting us. He says, this is your drills. I will let you speak the Dharma, and I will assume responsibility should you have to fall into woeful states. Uh, uh, 
And uh, this is not the case for the teachers who have not transcended the world yet. And therefore, uh, when they speak a Dharma or their disciples speak the Dharma, they get into big trouble and they don't realize it. So monks and nuns, keep that in mind. You, know, you can't uh, take it, uh, speak the Dharma uh, carelessly. Uh, you better know what you're talking about. You better open your wisdom first before you should speak the Dharma. Yes, this is uh, uh, what uh, the interpretation here. Okay, and you insert your different views, your mundane views, your attachments in your teachings. Uh, you fall. And so this is why it's easy for monks and nuns to fall to low realms. Yeah, the, actually, many of them fall to the hells because they are not careful about this. Okay. Yes, it's very easy to be a fool, to fool yourself by believing, yes, I have aspiration, I want to propagate Buddhism, I want to save living beings, I want to build temples, I want to print sutras, I want to help a lot of people believe in Buddhism. But if you don't have the wisdom, in spite of your good intentions, you still fall to the woeful states. And it's a scary, scary thing. Uh, because they don't have real wisdom, they're not even afraid to fall to woeful states. And you should be scared. I assure you, it's no fun at all. No temples, no amount of food, no amount of money can justify the suffering you endure when you have to fall oh, into the woeful states. Okay? And I even know uh, um, Master Shinoa's disciples who are believers in, uh, in his great dharma and still fell to the the worst of the hells. You should be scared. We should be scared. Okay? Deviant and proper, complete destroyed. Uh, the body nature appears spontaneously. What does it mean? Anyone has any ideas? These are the two lines are together. They are not meant to be explained separately. They are combined together. Anyone would like to try to explain this? No takers? Okay, then I explain it for you. Okay. Uh, when you practice the Dharma, okay, uh, it's very important for you let me prioritize it for you. Uh, I would move this line here before to be number one and then proper views as number two in order. Because here's what happens. When you practice, you engage in any type of spiritual practices at all. Uh, you want to make sure to avoid deviant views because that's what's going to make you fall and uh, close the door on you. And this is what happens. Master Shinhua's disciples learn the great Dharma, but they harbor deviant views. And that's why they fail. Okay? They stay in the world. Mundane here means the sixth path of reincarnation, the hells, hungry eagles, animals, asuras, human realms and the God's realm, the six realms, all right? Mm -hmm. So I would, if I, if I had a, a, a choice, if I, were, if I were allowed to do that, I would move number one to, number, to two, swap locations here. Because the first thing you want to do to avoid uh, harboring improper views, especially deviant views, Okay, uh, number two, 
Now you avoid the deviant views, and therefore you have a chance. At least you will not fall. Okay? And when you won't fall, then in order for you to transcend the world, you have to hold the proper views. You see, that's, that's very imperative for you to understand that. Okay? There's an there's a order of priorities, number one. This is why, uh, what's another word for, what's another rationale for the order? The order is more or less like the foundation. The foundation, your foundation, can, you cannot afford to have deviant views inserted in your foundation. What happens is that, it's like you look at uh, from a structural engineering perspective, huh? San Jose people, huh? you have a structural perspective, you have this huge foundation, this huge structure there. And if in that structure you have cracks, which are called also sim symbols, symbolic of deviant views, okay, the cracks will no multiply and will, will become bigger as you add more weight, as you ascend, as you go to higher levels of samadhi, the crack in your foundation will widen and will cause serious damages to your building. Yes? And that's why when you do, when you build a structure, right here, structural engineer in San Jose, isn't it imperative you build the foundation properly that's appropriate for the the structure that you plan to erect eventually, right? So it's the same thing. The deviant views are the cracks, they are the imperfections in your foundation. That's why they're so imperative for you to build, uh, to avoid uh, those, those, uh, those uh, mistakes in your foundation. Is that clear? And then, the proper views are the proper structures for you to reach higher heights. Okay? Any questions about this? Okay, so those are the general ideas, okay? You want to pursue any spiritual cultivation, spiritual path, avoid Living views and accrue proper views. Is it clear? Okay. Now, okay. Uh, it's so important for you to increase your proper views. Okay. In order uh, to make it to four stage arts. If you have improper views, you will not make it to four-stage arts. Your improper views will stop you from reaching that level. So that's why you have, you want to definitely take the side, uh, the side of the proper views in order to make it to four-stage our hardship. And that's why many teachers out there, I've seen in particular the very big names and the uh, well-known teachers out there, uh, they, in spite of their Dharma age, they didn't make a four-stage arhats because they have improper views. Improper views snuck into their beliefs in the faith system. They don't even realize it. And that's why, unless you have a good no advisor, you will not be able to detect it. Mahayana, we are so experienced where, where we produce so many talented bodhisattvas that we know or the pitfalls of the various practices. So that's why we tell you, you know, it's not about, it's not about uh, sitting for 20 or 30 years 
or isolating yourself in a cave, in a mountain. That's rather inefficient. Okay? It's about following a good no advisor who will tell you that which views are improper and which views that you need to develop, to hold, in order to make a four-stage arhat. Okay? Mm. And then, uh, just before you reach four-stage arhatship, okay, uh, by sticking on, by st staying on the proper view side, just before you reach there, you have to let go of even those proper views before you can certify to four-stage arhat. On the other hand, if you only hold improper views, you probably fall, you probably, uh, you probably regress before you make it, you have a chance to get even close. Is that clear? This is, this is the pitfalls of the monks and nuns and the lay people who practice without good, no advisor. This is, a, this is what the Chinese used to understand, but they don't get it anymore because their teachers don't stress it to their disciples anymore. And as one of the pitfalls in Master Shui Hua's teachings as well, he did not stress this to his disciples. Until you become a Buddha, you always cultivate under a good no advisor. Doesn't matter how good you are, doesn't matter how advanced you are, let alone to think you're better than anyone else. That's a deviant view. Don't you dare. After I die, if any of you holds a view that you're better than anyone else, maybe it's true, okay? Temporarily, yeah, I would turn in my grave. Wait, wait, shouldn't I be cremated? <laughs> you understand? It is so important, okay? Uh, but before you reach there, before you get there, just before you get there, okay, by taking the path of the deviant, of the, of the proper view, and renouncing your deviant views, you have to drop both. Okay? That's why it says, deviant and proper are completely destroyed. He's referring to a very threshold where you cross over to enlightenment. We're not talking about small enlightenment, the Hinayana people talk about, I don't, I don't even bother, okay? But you, first stage and second stage, ah, it's, it's too low, okay? It's so low. <laughs> that we don't even bother to call it enlightenment, you know. Uh, but you reach a four stage, ah, now I'm interested. When you get to close there, I say, ah, now, now we have to make sure that we help you avoid harboring those deviant views because that's what's going to stop you, okay? But, okay, but at the threshold, you, you even may not, cannot have any proper views. At that point, you still have to renounce your proper views. But only at that threshold, not before. If you renounce them before, you're in big trouble. You see how delicate it is? This is why it's so easy for those, especially Sunims who went to the, the countries uh, that, that uh, have great teachers and have systems built to, to uh, teach you cultivation, cultivation, meditation, and so forth, they don't make it because the teachers hold deviant views and the teachers don't realize it. I'm telling you, I'm proclaiming to you, Hinayana persuasion, go to Thailand, okay? Uh, the Thailand have a very strong system, and you follow the Fra teachers. I would not even follow non-Fra teachers in Thailand. 
Because the prior teachers are the one who made it. Just a small tip for you. Okay, you say, hey, I'm Hinayana, great, stick to Hinayana, but know where uh, to go, which well to go in order to draw water. Is it clear? Okay, because those teachers uh, are, are uh, more or less uh, proven to train uh, their students to reach for stage arts. They have the technology that the most Hinayana teachers don't. Go ahead, Kong. I'm telling you because I know I met so many young Korean uh, uh, disciples, I mean, Sunims, Vietnamese Sunims, Taiwanese, and so forth, and they have this beautiful aspiration, commendable aspiration to uh, become enlightened and save the world and help living beings. But they don't know where to go. And no one dare take a stand and say, yeah, hey, you know, this is where you ought to go. Okay, uh, because, because they are so easily misguided by following uh, these uh, uh, known teachers or the places that have the nice facilities, for example, in Taiwan. Taiwan has a lot of great temples. Uh, um, I send my disciples there. Master Xian Jie, I send him two years to Taiwan. And say, I I spring you loose. You you know, I hope you find a teacher. If you don't find a teacher, they probably can build a temple for you. They love pale faced monks. Okay, and you don't have to come back to our tiny temple because it's too embarrassing for us. Yeah, we don't deserve your patronage. <laughs> and so. Sure enough, over there, he went to the temples there and that he went to. Uh, unfortunately for him, he chose the temples that have all the facilities, all the reputation, but not the ones who have certified to the fruition yet. And the proof is that without that, uh, they could not protect him. Even, even those who are got, who got the four stage arhats cannot even protect Master Xian Jie, because that's why he had to come back to the U.S. Uh, uh, in all his non glorious achievements to say, "Okay, let's pick it up where we left off." <laughs> Okay, yeah. and so, uh, so be careful, you Hinayana people. Oh, it's not just Koreans. I saw too many Korean Sunnis make that mistake. Uh, too many Vietnamese, especially. I feel for the young Vietnamese, the young Tibetans who follow the wrong, the wrong path, the wrong teachers, but they have such uh, commendable aspirations. Okay, so for you, in San Jose, in Kong, in JMT, at DTT, here at WMT, okay, uh, our practice is to follow a good no advisor. Do not practice by yourself. And if you happen to believe in Hinayana, go to Thailand. If you happen to believe in Mahayana, you have to come to the U.S., okay? That's what the best teachers are right now. Just to save you time. Okay? And it's okay for me, I can say those things and offend a lot of people, but uh, it doesn't matter because no one believes me. Okay? Uh, Jewel Kong. Hello, Master. I have a question. When people who didn't reach the uh, Mayana level and try to explain the principle of Buddhism from Mayana Sutra or Mayana texts, would that be a, the, like deviant view as well? 
Yes, and they, they tend to develop different views of how knowing it. What happens to the scholars, what happens to the people who are not enlightened, this includes the four stage arhats, is that they're, they don't have real wisdom yet. And that's why when they explain sutras, they may have heard it from the great teachers. It happens too often. There are many people, monks and nuns, as well as lay people, uh, at Master Srinivas' era, they would go to the great teachers. They said, I studied from Master Xu Yun, I studied from Master Xinhua, I studied from their contemporaries, uh, what is it, Tai Xu in Taiwan, uh, Hong Yi in Taiwan, Tao Xun in Taiwan, uh, and those people, Su uh, Hang in Taiwan, uh, uh, the uh, various uh, uh, patriarchs uh, in China in the Wei Yang lineage, okay? Mm. Quite many people, uh, teachers are enlightened as well, okay? However, uh, however, for those teachers, uh, especially the ones who are not enlightened yet, uh, the ones who are just got the four stage arts uh, in Vietnam, in Thailand, and so forth, what happened is that they, when they read sutras, they learn one sutra, they, they study the explanations of one sutra, and then uh, more explanations of another sutra, and they try to synthesize, to try to combine them. That's where they have problems. If they stick to only to the teachings of the enlightened teachers, like Master Xu Yun, like uh, Master Xunhua, okay, then they stick to that under the umbrella, they're safe. This is one reason why Master Xunhua disciples are very smart. They don't stray f from underneath his shadow. He says, this is what Master Xunhua says. If you ask him a question, say, this is what my teacher says. Okay? Yeah, I, funny, I asked him, his disciple, I said, what do I do about this? He says, well, let me see. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Shio, I, didn't rem I don't remember Masha uh, uh, talking about this. However, the other teacher, the other, you know, like a uh, tutor, a great master tutor in his book, he says, uh, he says, this is the kind of, uh, of uh, thing you ought to do. So right there, they're trying to bridge between two teachings. Okay? That's when this kid here, I mean this, this uh, monk here, got in trouble. That's why when you try to do that, he cannot develop his own wisdom. That's why he's not a four-stage arhat even a four-stage arhat. Because that's what happens to people. They try to synthesize, yes, what my Master Shunha taught is right, it's proper. What Master Chucha taught is right and proper. But it's for different audiences, for different uses. Very much like when I first explained the sutra here. The Six Patriarch Sutra is for low-level students back then. Now your level is much higher, therefore I explain it differently for you. We look at the two. Maybe there's some, some clashes, some, some contradictions. You look closely. It's because it's not the same, the same audience anymore. Yes, A. From Jesus, do our improper views manifest in what we say only other also in our behavior? You, uh, it's not something you can detect yourself. It's impossible for you to detect. This is why you f we follow a good known advisor. It doesn't matter. I've seen too many people practice by themselves for 20, 30 years. This is why I, I do not like great Master Xu Yun's practice. He practiced by himself. He's too inefficient. I love the dedication. I love the, the, um, the sacrifices he made. It's incredible. The purity is incredible. However, it's horribly inefficient. That's why he became a lion at the age of 54. To me, it sucks. You don't practice 
from 19 to 54, and that's when you become enlightened. That's too slow. Not for us Americans, okay? You don't have time, like the Chinese. They have, they're way ahead of us. We need to do catch, to play catch up. Chinese, Korean, Vietnamese, you know, you name it. They're way ahead of us. And therefore, we need to have a much better, much more efficient uh, form of practice. Did I answer your question? Conk. Oh, YouTube, Ola, on Brain, the Met, Sermon, Mida, Myongsang, Tuan, Chisa, Kante, Yui, Jojak, Anin, Jio. So, the Borg is Chisa, Kante, Yui, Jojak. Can I send him the Borg? The Yawa, YouTube, and in the go, Chisa, Kante. 유의 조작 아닌지 취사 간택 취사 간택 유의 조작 한자가 뭔지를 알아야지 아 명상이 그런 게 아니냐 아아 아, 명상이 마음에서 조작된 거 아니냐 아아 so okay we gather all the information together to translate this sentence so the question from the YouTube, is meditation also a uh, fabrication of our mind? Like for example, we selectively choose or uh, renounce, something like that? Say it again. So the question is, is meditation uh, also a fabrication of our own mind? Um, uh, for example, we choose and pick uh, uh, inside our mind. So pick what? I'm having problem. I think you guys are, this is conspiracy to make me feel like I'm losing my hearing. I know I'm still pretty good at hearing things, but for some reason, every time they ask me a question, these people, I cannot, I cannot hear what they're asking. Is this a, are you trying to do something to me? Are you trying to tell me I should go get hearing aids or what? I mean, this is, this is nonsense. You enunciate. Do slur things when you ask me. It's annoying. Well, so the question is in Chinese. We try to translate, but we're not sure. Well, you can't answer and yeah, translate the question. It's not my problem. All right, so... When, when he's talking, what he's talking about here, deviant proper, completely destroyed, he says, he says, theoretically, that's what happens that moment. At that moment for you, or for your body nature to come forth, to manifest spontaneously, meaning you don't, you don't have to do anything. Okay? And this is very delicate. This is why... This is why it's not something that I want to dissect it for you, like a, like a recipe in, the, in the developing a, a, a drug or, or a recipe for you to cook, okay, or, or manufacturing process. It doesn't work like that. It's very, very delicate. It's not something that if you want, you went through it, then you, ah, oh, that's what happened. But for you to dissect it, for, for anyone else to dissect it for you, it's not going to happen. It will not help you at all. So just for now, or whatever uh, you were wondering about, just remember that you walk the proper path, 
uh, the proper views, and then uh, you stick the proper views, hang on to it until until uh, you're able to get to the point where uh, where uh, you need to even destroy the proper views as well. Okay, and that's when you become enlightened. The body nature here re refers to your uh, your enlightened nature comes to the fore, manifests itself. Okay, so this is a very delicate process. That's why, uh, that's why um, the Hinayana practitioners, they have to isolate themselves so that they are not corrupted by the environment, especially not just the environment, by you, deviant people. Okay, that's why men are the worst uh, polluters, men are the worst uh, corruptors in the world. Okay, men are corrupt. Ask Donald Trump, he'll tell you. Okay, uh, and so, uh, so that's why the Hinayana practice, that practice there, they have to go away from people so that they avoid the corruption. And that process there is what they do. And their Hinayana process they, they, that the uh, Thai people, the Thai system have perfected. If they can do the real and proper, completely destroyed, that's when their enlightened nature came to the fore. Okay? Their a caveat, however, they have become, they accomplished small enlightenment. Uh, they uh, tend to be stuck there because they don't have the technology to go beyond that, to go beyond the small enlightenment of the fourth stage Arhat is even more work that, uh, that is proper, it's better accomplished by the great assembly Dharma, by stick, by practicing with others, not by yourself. And that's why the Mahayana practice is far, far superior. And that technology was brought by Master Shen Hua to the U.S. Okay? It's no longer available in China. I'm sorry. You want that great assembly dharma, you have to come to the U.S. There's no replacement. And I need to tell you that. You may not believe me, but 50 years from now, 100 years from now, okay, people remember that uh, I'm a small-time monk who said, you should have done it because Master Shiho brought the technology here. He didn't teach it in China. He taught it here in the U.S. Okay? All right, let's continue. Enough is enough. There's no way for you to understand. This is very delicate. I, I can only can explain so f much to you. Even, uh, even there's some, 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 uh, uh, there's a lot of things going on here that cannot be explained to you. Okay? Just be humble. There's a lot more going on here that we can possibly explain to you. You can possibly understand. Uh, 248. This verse is a certain teaching also called the Great Dharma Boat. Here in confusion, pass through Kalpas in Kasana enlightenment. Tsung Shi Dun Jiao, Yi Ming Da Fa Chuan, Mi Wen Jing Lei Jie, Wu Zhe Cha Na Jian. Okay. It's the end of uh, the teaching. He says, this verse is a certain teaching. So he says, if you practice following this verse, you are practicing the certain teaching. Okay? And it's called the great Dharma boat because this teaching here is a great Dharma boat, the Dharma boat, the boat uh, of Dharma that will bring you from a shore of suffering to the shore of nirvana, of peace and bliss, okay? And 
of, uh, uh, of uh, end of all suffering and experience permanent bliss. Okay, and that's why it's called Great Dharma Boat, because it's bliss here, this uh, joy here you experience is far greater than anything else that you can experience through any other practice. Yes, seven. Thank you, Master. Um, on, the, on the first slide of the sutra uh, text, um, it, it used a word I haven't seen before, um, kasana, I believe. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it the right way, but I think it was K-S-A-N-A. -A. Yes. What is that? Mm. I'm coming to that. Okay. Well, go ahead, conk. I'm going to give another shot. <laughs> We've been investigating what this person wanted to ask. So this question is from the internet. Uh, his name is Brain from a Korean person. He it says, it's, it's meditation. Uh, we are already uh, stressful in our lives. So it's meditation Try to fool ourselves, meaning the ego. It's trying to fool ourselves by pick and choose and prove like a... Um, uh, decide what it means, uh, fabricate, uh, provide uh, specific meanings to whatever happens. So is it like a fake? Uh, pick and choose in our mind and fabricate. Fake? This question. F fabrication. Fabrication of our mind. Uh, try to give uh, meanings uh, in our mind. I'm not answer, going to answer that because the question is totally confused. Okay? Uh, you want to know more? Cross your legs more. Come to the temple more. Listen to the Dharma more. And then your question will make more sense. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm doing a Chan Chi. I'm very blunt. You, you, cross, you don't want to cross words with me because I, I, I cut you to pieces. Okay? Uh, uh, don't don't uh, don't don't uh, uh, don't provoke me when I'm doing a chanchi because I'm not I'm very irrit irritable. <laughs> this question is nonsense. Okay, drop that. All the things that you that motivated you to ask this question, that special desire to understand what meditation is about, drop that. Just cross your legs. Okay, and then you, and eventually, until your pain goes away, until you are able to resist the temptation to quit, then your question will make more sense. Right now, this question is nonsense. It's not something you can understand intellectually. You have to do it before you understand why. This is a fallacy of you young people, you newcomers. You want to understand. You don't want to do it. There's no understanding that's possible with how you doing it. This is why we go Chan Chi. We do a Chan Chi. We force your body to follow the practice from three until midnight so that you don't think anymore. You don't try to understand anymore. You have to do it. If you can do it from three into midnight, then it's very easy to explain things to you. Now you understand very quickly. If you sit say, I just want to understand, like most people who come to study meditation, who went to Zen schools, or, or ask questions, to, to, or read books on Chan to try to understand what this is about, you will never be able to understand it. Never. So that's why most scholars who don't meditate, who don't, who have, who only translated 
the Chan anecdotes from Chinese into English, all their translation are crap. You cannot understand Chan until you cross your legs, until you follow the Chan training. Not of your choosing. You don't choose to do what you wish. That's contrary to Chan training. Chan training is that whatever you told to do, you do. You don't need to understand. Don't try to understand. You know, let me understand this. So I come to the temple for one hour. I practice a meditation one hour every day. I come to the temple on the weekend. Is what I, I you know, and then it's going to help me make progress and become enlightened. Yes. So why? Do it, then you understand. You have to get there. Chan is about me bringing you there, not about me explaining it to you. Because I cannot explain it to you. I can only bring you there. Then, whatever I said will make sense to you. It's about doing day in, day out, hour after hour, day after day. Okay, so this is a verse of certain teaching. And the master, and the, master the great teacher says, what I'm teaching you about this prajna teaching here, what's different about it versus from the other teachers, including enlightened teachers, is a certain teaching. Called the great Dharma boat. Yes, there's no way for you to understand to understand what this means. But you need to understand that even after you become enlightened, after you get the first ground Bodhisattva, second ground, third ground, fourth, fifth, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever, okay, yeah. you go into the range of certain teaching. That's what he's talking about. Not lower levels. And this Dharma boat here is uh, the boat that is a little bit bigger than Noah's Ark and take limitless number of living beings across. Okay? Uh, even so, you teachers out there who wish to teach the great Dharma and wish to transmit this certain teaching here to uh, your students, okay? if you are not enlightened yet, if you are not at the position to understand this yet, you are hearing it in confusion. He's very blunt about this. I know he said that Chinese is very eloquent, very elegant. He says, oh, you're in confusion. Actually, it's an admonition. He said, you idiots who are already enlightened, but your level is too low, okay? You still hear it in confusion. Because you hear it in confusion, you try to understand it, you pass through kalpas. You're hearing it in confusion. That's why you practice by yourself. You're going to be you're going to have to go through kalpas of practices. Yes, seven. Thank you, Master. I really appreciate you revisiting uh, the Sixth Patriarch Sutra because I don't remember a lot of these uh, concepts the first time I heard you lecture on it. 
Yeah, and thank you for pointing it out. You're absolutely right. I said it, but you, you guys didn't know what I was talking about. The first time I explained this is the traditional Chinese way of explaining Six Bay Chak Sutra. I said, if I can go through this Six Bay Chak Sutra about a certain teaching, I'd be so happy that no one asked me a question I could not answer. I did that. Okay? But, but now, my students are much higher levels, much higher than, 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 than three or four years ago. So I need to explain, them diff explain this to them differently, it bring the depth of this teaching out that the Chinese don't have. I've, I've read a lot of Six Patriarch Sutra's explanations. The old traditional ways are like this, it's Chinese. They don't have to spell it out for you. None of them spell it out for you, including Master Shehua's. And I, the reason I, I explain it to you differently is because, because I'm trying to help save you time. If you're not careful, you're going to be stuck like the Chinese on this particular Dharma, the Six Patriarch Dharma. Certain teaching dharma, and they are. Master Shehua's uh, did not elaborate on this this way. That's why, if you listen to his teachings, you be you tend to be stuck here. Of course, did not to mention that Xu Yun would not even even be able to touch this. I'm telling you, Master Shehua understands this, but he did not prepare his students for this particular, these particular pitfalls. I'll be the last one to tell you I understand it more than Master Shehua. I just understand it more than you, all of you. And if, unless you're careful, unless, unless you are aware of the pitfalls of the way the Chinese teachers, the Chinese patriarch explain this sutra, which causes these problems for their disciples, okay? We don't want to have that problem, so that's not why we're going to surpass them. You surpass them because you don't have this problem. I want more of you to be able to avoid these pitfalls on the Chinese teaching. I will tell you this, no Chinese teacher ever dare tell you that the patriarch left a hole is in their teachings. I'm telling you, they have, especially Master Shehua left a hole here in this particular patriarch's teaching. Okay? Uh, and that's why I want you not to fall into that trap. Yes? I'm, I'm very grateful for you uh, speaking to this master, and especially as I'm learning about the great Dharma boat, if there's a hole, I absolutely want to help patch it up so it doesn't sink. Um, is there any more you can elaborate on what the, the great Dharma boat is? And if I'm attaching or you know focusing on a detail that's not important, I accept that, but... It just seems so fascinating. It's the first time I've heard of this concept. Is it a sailboat, a rowboat? Noah's Ark is this great grand boat that's very uh, powerful visual image in Christianity. So to hear about it is fascinating the, to me. The great Dharma boat is a boat that's slightly bigger than the Noah's Ark because it's not simply uh, be content with crossing over pairs of animals, of human beings, okay? It's more interesting in saving all living beings. That's how big of a boat it is. This Dharma here is designed to help all sorts of people, not just Chinese, not just Vietnamese, not just Koreans, 
This is why I keep on stressing to the uh, young uh, Korean Sunnis. I want you to stu study a Dharma, and yes, I know you're very proud Koreans, you think Koreans are superior, but eventually when you have enough wisdom, you find out you no longer are Korean. Okay, because the Dharma we're teaching you, we're practicing, is a big, the great Dharma boat, where we uh, use that Dharma to cross over all sorts of living beings, Jews, Muslims, pale faces, black faces, red faces, yellow faces, young, old, deviant, proper, everyone. We don't discriminate at all. Okay? Mm -hmm. And, and yes, seven. Master, I have a question about the deviant and proper views. Um, how do you okay. know if uh, you're right on the right uh, foundation and you don't have like cracks in the building? And you know, when you're building the samadhi level, I don't want like the building to fall down. Right. And that's what happened. What happened to the lesser teachers is that they allow the students to harbor those improper views. Why? Maybe the students are the one who gave them a temple, who gave them money to do the Dharma propagation, who they depend on, and therefore they're afraid to lose that support. Hmm? You know, like my master said, you know, he said, you know, in, in some temples, yeah, it's the Taiwanese who support the temple who, who donate the money every month so to pay for the, the utility bills and all the bills and the taxes and so forth and the salaries and the stipends and so forth. Okay? And if they withdraw their support, um, give it to another temple, what are they going to do? And if you're a monk, don't you ever dare. You're my disciple. Don't you ever dare. Okay? To say that why would, when we compromise a little bit, at least we have a chance to propagate Master Yung Hoa's Dharma. There's nothing worth propagating if that's what you do. It's not my Dharma anymore. My Dharma is that if I need to, I piss everyone off. Take a hike. Leave me alone. You don't like the Dharma? Get out. Because this Dharma is supposed to also help save who, those who don't like it. If I only save, can only save those who like it, then it's not a great Dharma. Vote. Okay? And what happened is that if you practice and you have deviant views, you don't know. Just because you go to Master Shenhua's temple, for example, and listen to all his teachings, I guarantee you, you have so many cracks in your foundation, you don't even know. That's why part of my work is sort of talk differently to remind you, make you reflect, okay, about the foundation you built upon his teachings. That's why I'm, I always insist on you that to listen to both. Hmm? His is a start, okay? And mine is sort of like the, the check. His will take you very far, but mine will take you further. If you get rid of the cracks in your foundation. His has cracks in the foundation. And I don't find it, I find it unacceptable. Xi Yun has too many cracks in his foundation. I said, don't even bother talking to me about Xi Yun's teaching. Yes, seven. There's a lot of, um, there's not too many Master Xinhua um, 
stuff in English. So there's one that lasts like seven hours of some woman that sounds like a robot on YouTube. Is that a good one? Or, I mean, this, this just the stuff I found on YouTube in English. You, if Masha uh, Xuanhua, the best, the best way to learn his teaching is in Chinese. Because what happened is his disciples are not good enough yet. That's why the translation to English is limited to their wisdom level. They could not, they, they miss out on these certain teaching part, for example, specifically, they miss out on his certain teaching part. Okay? Uh, so that's why, if possible, listen to it in Chinese. If you can't, listen to it in the English of his disciples, not anyone else's. Because his disciples are the highest level practitioners of Mahayana in English. That's a fact. Okay? He did a great thing for us in producing disciples who are able to translate his teachings to up to a very high level. Okay? That's all that he could bring them to. We're going to have go higher, much higher. And that's how, you know, that in order to get higher, we need to avoid the cracks in his foundations that appeared because of the translation. Not because his original teachings are improper. Okay? Some I disagree, okay? but his angle is different from mine. But, but most of the cracks from his teachings are from the English translation. And that's why you generation, your, your my disciple generation, after I'm done, you know, all you have to do is, is uh, go back to his teachings and point out the cracks <laughs> on the translation. That's how you justify your existence. They're fantastic translation, but because of the cracks, you can go so high, you go higher, you're going to be in trouble. I can't be more blunt than that. Okay, uh, the great Dharma boat, because it accommodates a lot of people. Okay, uh, and uh, you hear confusion, you pass through kalpas, okay? Kalpas is a long, long time. The smallest denomination is the, the small, smallest uh, uh, number you can think of is 16 million years. One kalpa. Okay? Hmm. So you hear confusion, you can, you can cultivate this Mahayana Dharma here for kalpas for millions of years, or tens of millions of years, hundreds of millions of years, billions of years, trillions of years. That's what he's referring to. The Chinese are very, very gentle. I'm brutal, I'm telling you. Kalpas here refers to trillions. It ain't gonna be 10 million, 16 million, it's gonna be billions of years. Trillions, gazillions. Okay? That's how difficult it is. That's how delicate it is. Okay? Uh, uh, here confusion pass through uh, Kalpas. Okay? However, this certain teaching here, you hear the certain teaching from Master, Master, Master uh, Patriarch here, Master Hui Neng. You hear his teaching. As soon as you hear it, in Kasana, Kasana is a very short duration. 
Okay? There are many different measurements from China, from, from India, and so forth. So they say that, for example, Gasana could be like when you blink your eye. Okay? You blink your eye. Okay? Uh, the Gasana is a fraction of, of that time right there. When you blink your an eye, a Gasana is just a fraction, a tiny fraction of it. Or they may define it further like a Gasana you know, in, in, uh, in uh, the thought. You know that you have like uh, 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 in in the, uh, in a uh, in in a thought there are ninety nine births and deaths. Okay, meaning that the, 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 your thoughts arise there quickly. Okay, yeah, and uh, and and so there are many different different uh, definitions, but kasana here. Uh, just for all practical purposes, don't blame us and say, how come you are not clear about this? It doesn't matter. However you want to call it, okay? How short, how long it is. The concept here, kasana, is a, an instant, very short duration, okay? Uh, shorter than, than your thoughts, okay? That you're aware of, you're aware of, she's aware of, she's aware of, she's aware of, all of you. Is much shorter than you aware of your thoughts. For example, I'll give you an example. There's some people who says, "I practice meditation. I sit there, and all of a sudden, I have no more thoughts." It's because they're not aware of the tiny, tiny, tiny subtle thoughts that's still occurring. They cannot detect them. So the kasana here is very, very short duration. And you become enlightened just like that. That's why it's called sudden. Sudden enlightenment because the enlightenment only takes this long. That's it. And all of you can become enlightened. All of you. And the teacher is preparing, is supposed to prepare you for that certain enlightenment. But you are too smart. You think you can figure it out. Hmm? Especially the Vietnamese in San Jose, they follow those disciples in San Jose. I follow all the great teachers, especially Master Shehua headquarters are here and so forth. Okay? I follow all those teachings. Okay? And they're still confused because because they have not been able to be ready for that moment. A teacher, the difference in a Chinese system versus a Hinayana teacher or Vietnamese system and so forth, Vietnamese Korean system, for example, a Korean system, they don't have that. Vietnamese don't have it, definitely, for sure. The Chinese used to have it, but they lost it because they pushed Master Shen Hoa out. <laughs> They couldn't keep him. You, you, don't, you, you understand? If you do not take good care of a great teacher, they leave. Because you're not good enough. Okay? So, so, so that the teacher... The good knowing advisor is the one. Okay, I will tell you another aspect. Good knowing advisor that the Chinese don't explain to you. The good knowing advisor, the great good knowing advisor, like like Master Master Six Patriarch here. Okay, at the one who prepared their students for that kasana thing. Hmm. So Master Wei Shan, for example, uh, taught. Uh, Xiang Yin, one of the great uh, eminent monks there who practiced Ohato, uh, and he prepared him so, so because Xiang Yin is uh, too stupid. Uh, he is too stuck on his learning. Xiang Yin is like he's very erudite. He read all the teachings. It's, I believe it's no book he never read. Okay. And so he gives him a big head, thinking he knows everything. Okay? And so Master Wei Shan, 
this is a story Xiang Yin Chan Master Wei Shan says, why don't you uh, uh, practice this Hua Tou here? Okay, yeah. and and uh, that actually is a preparation for Xiang Yin to to uh, to become a lightning nikasana. But later he just he gravel hit the bamboo stalk and, and that sound right there. In the kasana, he became enlightened. Like Xu Yun, when this, uh, his uh, cup, his glass cup, okay, uh, he dropped his glass cup during the Chan Chi, and he hits the floor and splatters into pieces. And the sound right there, the kasana. So that's what the Chan Chi is supposed to help prepare you for that. So, uh, in a kasana, enlightenment. Okay, enlightenment happens in a kasana. That's all it takes. But in order to get there, you need to have the proper preparation. And it cannot happen unless you have the proper foundation. You don't have, if you have confusion in your mind, I'm talking about uh, me here, uh, me here, uh, it also applies to enlightened students. The, the enlightened bodhisattvas, they still are confused about certain things. Okay, they don't realize, they don't, they're not aware of the nature, the confusion. That's why they still have to pass through Kalpas. That is the case in chapter 39 of the Avatapsaka Sutra. Good wealth went through uh, the many teachers who, and got certified the first ground bodhisattva and went to the next teacher. And he has to go through millions of years of practices in order to certify the second ground bodhisattva and so forth and so forth. Every single time, it took longer and longer and longer because he heard the instructions in confusion. And so he had to, set, to sit there and practice with them under their protection and their guidance. And just like Huayka practiced under um, Bodhidharma for nine years, during nine years, Bodhidharma helped help pave the way, build the foundation for that kasana. That Huayka wouldn't otherwise be able to from reading books and trying to understand or asking stupid questions. Yes, Seven. Thank you, Master. As I'm, I'm really appreciative of you explaining Kasana, and this is just like a massive concept, you know, to be able to fit immeasurable time and kalpas inside of an instant. But, so I understand, am I correct in, in learning here that this hearing and confusion passing through Kalpas in a Kasana enlightenment is happening on the great Dharma boat. So the great Dharma boat is facilitating this process? No, no. Uh, uh, the Vietnamese is here, they, they got some Vietnamese resources. It says one thought is equal to nine, has 96 Kasanas. Okay, that's how fast it is. That's why your mind is very, very fast. The enlightened people's minds are much faster than ours because they're aware. Okay? And the kasana there liberates their, speeds up their, their the thought processes to, be, to become extremely, extremely fast. It's real. Okay? Uh, what, what he means is that the certain teaching here is the teaching that is supreme teaching in Buddhism, in Chan. And that's why, unfortunately, Master Shi did not stress it in his teachings to his disciples. 
Maybe they're not good enough. Maybe he explained to the good ones, I don't know where they are. Okay? We don't know. But I know that this certain teaching here, okay, is, not, is poorly understood by the ones who translate it into English. That's my problem. Okay? And because of that, okay, the Dharma he taught cannot be called the great Dharma both yet. If in my generation, the English explanation of Mahayana can be that much, it's, it's called the Dharma boat, but not the great Dharma boat. <laughs> I'm trying to not to piss my Sashrina off. <laughs> yes, go for us. Anh Di Đà Phật, dạ thưa Thầy, con rất là gu si cho nên con không hiểu được cái câu Thầy nói là nghe trong mê muội. Con không biết nghe trong mê muội là cái gì. Ok. A metaphor master, uh, maybe because of my stupidity, I really don't understand when you explain the verse. Uh, here in confusion, what does it mean to be here in confusion? Uh, let me start by saying you are right, you are stupid. So when you hear, uh, then you hear in confusion. That's where you are. You need more explanation? <laughs> okay, so the certain teaching here, okay, is what we're referring to, he's referring to is the higher level of teaching. Okay, and that's why it's called the Great Dharma Boat. What Master Shinhua is teaching that's translated into English is called a Dharma boat, not a great Dharma boat in English. That's a problem, in my humble opinion. And of course, uh, his disciples disagree with me. I don't care. I can't care less what they think. Okay? Here in confusion, okay, you pass through Kalpas. You disagree, you don't understand, you are confused. And you're going to need more, many more Kalpas before you have the chance to, in a kasana, reach enlightenment through the certain teaching. See, the Chinese, what he says is very elegant, very elegant, very eloquent, but it contains uh, the kind of teaching that's so complete that you cannot possibly Translate this into English. Okay, the translation is very good, but you read it is uh, still not clear to you until someone beats you in the head that you are confused. That's why I can't explain to you. You're too confused. And just like most confused people, you try to understand. Instead of doing, you understand. He said, um, let me see if I understand this first before I do it. Sounds familiar, huh, smart, educated people? Let me see if I understand you. Let me see if I understand this. There's nothing to understand because whatever I tell you, you hear in confusion. It's not possible for you to understand. And if you are confused, and you hear confusion like, like you are, okay? You are, you're going to have to go through Kalpas. And that's why in the lady who just asked a question, you're going to have to go through Kalpas. Go to the Pure Land, girl. Okay, so that's, that, that's it. 
you tell yourself, I'm going to the pavilion, I don't care what everyone says. <laughs> yes, go ahead, go for us. Dạ, A Di Đà Phật, dạ con đã hiểu rằng con mê muội như vậy là <cười> con con biết là con mê muội rồi, con xin sám hối A Di Đà Phật. Amitabha Master, I understand that I'm confused. That's all I know. So um, about my confusion, therefore I really uh, repent on that. You see, he still, she still doesn't understand. She thinks she understands. She still doesn't understand. What does she not understand? It's not about my insulting her. Again, no pleasure our insulting her. Well, uh, let's not go that far. <laughs> There's no fun insulting you. Why am I insulting you then? Uh, yes, sir, servant. Thank you, Master. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I know. I recognize your observation, and I accept it that I'm confused. But still, in my head, I have this like, like the original Willy Wonka movie vision of this this poem, where Willy Wonka gets some. You know, they've all entered the factory, and then he's like, "Let's get on the boat," and then they go on the boat through the tunnel. And the lights go all crazy, and he's like, you know, oh, we don't know what we're going to see, and there's a song. But to me, that's what's happening here, right? You get on the Dharma boat of sudden enlightenment, and despite hearing Willy Wonka's song in confusion, you pass through Kalpas and a Kasana and gain sudden enlightenment. <sighs> that's just my takeaway. This is about, it can be classified as a stupid question or comment that was I, uh, I called on uh, earlier from Korea. <laughs> okay. uh, he's, he's fascinated by the great Dharma boat here. And the great Dharma boat here refers to those beings who are able to practice this certain teaching and can reach a very high level. And that high level practitioner that can save a lot of people. Hmm? Hmm. So, for example, Master Xu Yun hmm, was pretty decent level, pretty high level of enlightenment, okay? And that in, in, uh, in the, all the Chan school patriarchs, whether it's Wei Yang, whether it's uh, Sao Tong, whether it's Hua Yan, whether it's uh, uh, Lin Ji, and so forth, he's pretty high level. That's why he's a, he's a known, well known patriarch. Okay? Uh, however, okay, his Dharma, what he teaches, cannot be called the great Dharma boat because he can only handle so many people. He can only help so many people become enlightened. That's why his, his, uh, his uh, help is limited. It cannot call great. Great Dharma boat, he refers to the capacity of uh, the kinds of people, the number of people, the level of people who can be crossed over by your teaching. Master Hui Neng's teaching, this Hun teaching here, is a great Dharma boat because he can cross over limitless living beings, including very high level bodhisattvas, mahasattvas. That's why it's called the great Dharma boat. It's able to handle people like us, all of us, Master Shinoa included. Chi Yun is only a level of Master Shinoa disciples. That's why it cannot be called great Dharma, great, great Dharma, not in our world. Maybe he'd have ran out of Chinese disciples. That's why Master Shenhua had to go to the U.S. and found better disciples. And don't get offended, you Chinese people. 
Okay? It's a temporary thing. Meaning that Master Xuanhua, he only had a window of 30 years to transmit his Dharma. So he had to go here, to come here and transmit it. But, but then, but then, so that it gives the Chinese and the Vietnamese and the Koreans a chance to mature, the seeds to mature. Okay? And that's why, that's why now he predicted, now the Dharma has to go back to those countries because the seeds are ripening. You understand? It's a timing problem here. Bless you. <laughs> okay, but for people that the lady who asked, she says, I'm confused. Said, no, she missed the point. The point is that I'm not calling her stupid. I'm calling her, I'm pointing out to her the, the, uh, the, the uh, time limitations for her. Okay? Because she's confused, she's hearing this Dharma here in confusion, and she needs to pass through Kalpas, and therefore she better go to the Pure Land. Okay, number one. And number two, it's very important for me to stress as well, contrary to the Pure Land teachers, is that you don't simply want to go to the Pure Land. That's that the woman immediately jumps and says, I'm stupid, therefore I should go to the Pure Land. No. What I'm teaching you, you need to go to the Pure Land, but now you set your mind to go to the Pure Land. The next obvious thing for you to do is go with the highest grade possible. That's a Pure Land Dharma. The Pure Land Dharma is not about going to Pure Land alone. It has to go there with extremely high rebirth grade. That's a Pure Land Dharma we're teaching, and that's what the Chinese and Vietnamese don't have. That's why we call it American Pure Land Dharma, because they don't have it. It's a typical reaction that, China, that Vietnamese woman. She practiced Pure Land for all these uh, decades, and she says, now I, I want to go to the Pure Land. And even so, at this point, after, after learning from me for all these years, she still doesn't understand the priorities. You go to the Pure Land, okay, but very high grade. Going there is not good enough. Not for us, Americans. Okay? Hmm. Uh, because you go through, uh, if you are confused right now, you have to pass through Kelpas in order to reach enlightenment. It's very much like good wealth, Bodhisattva, good wealth, Bodhisattva in chapter 39, entering the Dharma realm. Ru Fa Jie. It's the title of that chapter 39. Okay, fantastic chapter. Okay. Uh, that he has to go through every single level, he has to go through Kalpas in order to get out and ascend to a high level. That's how difficult it is. Okay. And because that's good wealth, because good wealth, you know, he's only good wealth. That's why he had to go through Kalpas. If you're going to be like good wealth, and then you have to pass through Kalpas too. However, if you're smart, you do it right, in a kasana, you can leap. Enlightenment here, uh, uh, wu here, uh, wu here uh, is, in the Chinese, they say wu is like enlightenment, but actually, enlightenment here has many gradations. It's not explained to the Chinese, to the Asians. I explain it to you. I need you to understand this enlightenment here. Mm -hmm. huh? Huh? Is even after you become enlightened, you still have gradations. You're still pretty stupid, actually. <laughs> That's why good wealth has to go to Calvus. Okay? Yeah. We still have 20 minutes, 
Okay. Uh, 251, the Master said further, in the Tafan temple, I have just now spoken the certain teaching, making the universal vow that all living beings of the Dharma realm will see the nature and realize Buddhahood as they hear these words. 师父曰, 普愿法界众生, 252. Let's go through this thing here. Let's dissect it for you. He says here, this is a big moment for Chinese Mahayana Dharma. It happened here at the Ta Fan Temple. This very day, at this very place, okay, I just gave you the certain teaching. This is a very important Dharma for Chinese Buddhism. And it should be recorded in the history of Chinese Buddhism. It did happen here at Ta Fan Temple on this day. It's a historic moment. Is it clear? He cannot say, but we should understand it that way. It's, it's a very, very big deal for Chinese Buddhism. The he one who said, for us Chinese people, this very moment here is the one that I officially transmit to you the certain teaching. Okay? And I do it because, uh, because I vow that if you follow my teaching here, that I just dispense you at Ta Fan Temple today, okay? I vow if you follow my teaching, the verses here, all the verses up here before, okay? You follow all that, okay? Uh, then I vow that uh, all of you who believe in this teaching, who follow my instructions, will see your nature and become enlightened, realize Buddhahood, okay? Cheng uh, Fo, realize Buddhahood instantaneously. Or if you, if, uh, you, you quote Amitabha Buddha, or else I will not accomplish Buddhahood myself. But since he cannot tell people that he's enlightened already, he's a Buddha already, which I feel he is, because I have yet to see any teacher, any patriarch, who's teaching as, as profound as he is, as good as a teacher as he, as he is. Uh, so he says, uh, uh, said that they will realize Buddhahood. And like this, again, here, to me, is a confirmation he's a Buddha already. Because he says, my teaching here, you should become a Buddha yourself. How can he say that unless he's a, he's a Buddha? Hmm? So he says, on this day, at this place, I transmitted you the entire certain teaching of the Chan school. Chinese have it. And guess what? Tonight at Wei Mountain Temple, we Americans also have it. <laughs> we have his Dharma, okay, not my Dharma. Let's make it, make it clear for you. I ain't no Buddha. I'm an idiot monk. I has a big mouth. Okay? It's a big, big deal. Okay? He says, it's a real big deal, folks. Okay? Uh, this is a big deal for Chinese Buddhism. And therefore, as I said tonight, it's a big deal for us as well. We have his Dharma. Uh, 253, 
Then Hmong magistrate Wei and the officials, Taoists, and lay people who heard what the master said, there were none who did not awaken. Shi Wei Jun Wei Shi Jun Yu Guan Liao Dao Su Wen Shi So Shu Wu Bu Xing Wu. This is where the uh, translation sucks a little bit. Okay? And you Chinese, you bilingual people, you have any problem with translation? I'm giving you a clue. I have a problem. See, even Xiao Tai has to roll around the floor and say, I have a problem too. Roll some more, roll around some more. It's so cool. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Now stand on your head. Can you do that? Oh, I have to teach you. Oh, you. No one taught you how to do that? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Excellent. He understands how to do a headstand. Wow. How old are you again? 20? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the commentary. Uh, um, uh, so at that time, among the audience, Magistrate Wei, who was actually a very high level uh, practitioner for an official, that is, okay. uh, and the officials, uh, and meaning his, his, uh, his uh, colleagues and subordinates, uh, Taoists and lay people, or Taoist um, practitioners uh, and lay people who heard what the master said. So you see, the teaching was bestowed upon a bunch of officials, Taoists and monks, and of course, and lay people. Okay, and uh, so you can tell that Master Master Huineng's uh, disciples are pretty pretty advanced. Uh, uh, there were none. Uh, Wen Chu Suo Shuo Wu Bu Sheng Wu. Okay, it's not awakened. This is what my problem is with the English translation. When I read it, when you read it, my first impression is that they become enlightened. No, 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 no. It's that simple. It's not that simple. Okay, uh, of all these people who gathered there, a cross section of the best uh, practitioners back then uh, who followed Master Master Huineng, okay, they heard it. So the 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 certain teaching has to be spoken for you, has to be bestowed upon you. Okay, because you're worthy of it. Okay, and because of that, so these people are pretty special, these matches the way, the official thousand lay people, those people there, okay, uh, were deserved to hear the most advanced uh, Mahayana Chandama that was. So these people are extremely, extremely important for Chinese Buddhism. They have they are the reason why it was spoken to them to the Chinese. Understand that? Okay? And, and maybe it's not magistrate Wei, because I doubt he would be a very high level, but maybe among them would be some uh, lay people. Officials, well, you know, corrupt. Most officials are corrupt, so not a whole lot. You have Taoists, they're very limited. Lay people. So you see, 
And what happened is that don't sell yourself short. Slow you lay people there. You know, you have tremendous potential. That's why it had to be spoken. Okay? So he sits on the big shot, who is the Dharma protector, who sponsored his Dharma and encouraged a lot of people, even twist their arms to go and listen to him. That's the official, the other officials. Okay? Uh, unlikely to be his peer. Most likely, the officials are below him. Magistrate weight was pretty high level. It's like a governor level of California, like Newsom kind of thing. Okay. Uh, so he had a lot of officials he brought along with him. And this is part of your work. If you're a lay person, uh, you might want to put yourself in a position of power where uh, you, you help a lot of your underlings, uh, give the exposure. Okay? Uh, you make them go. You tell them to go. You don't explain to them. Uh, so, and the Taoist people, so these Taoists are the practitioners who recognize the Taoists may not have wisdom, but recognize that uh, because through their spiritual practice, they recognize the Master Huynang's Kung Fu is very, very high, much higher than theirs. Okay? Uh, and lay people. Uh, uh, so uh, lots of lay people have tremendous potential under Master Huynang's thing, uh, uh, assembly. Uh, uh, all of them, no, none uh, did not shang is to shang is examine yourself. Wu is awakened. So they drop the examine themselves because these people don't understand this teaching here. The teaching here is designed for you to look at yourself and think about your cracks, your imperfections, your in in inadequacies. You don't look at others. Okay? You don't, people who come to the temple, you don't tell them, how come you don't do this? How come you don't do that? Because you're looking at their inadequacies. That's wrong. Shang is you look at your own inadequacies. Whatever they do, it doesn't matter. They don't, they, they, they don't practice, they practice their way, their style. It's none of our business. You understand? You shut up. You don't say anything. The shang here is that my teaching to you is that you should think about, much as you said that, can I do it? Am I doing it? That's, a, that's all you do. You don't tell people. You don't tell, how come you don't practice? How come you don't come to the temple? How come you don't, don't attend Master, Master Yung Hua's uh, lecture? None of your business. Okay? Because they're not your students. They're my students. I don't even tell them, how come you don't come to my temple? Or, how come you don't come to my lecture? How come you attend my Chan Chi? Who are you to tell them? Understand? Shang here, you look at yourself, you don't look at others. That's all. That's how, what our Dharma is about is you. I speak Dharma for you. It's not for you to go there and tell, hey, uh, I attending uh, uh, his lecture tonight. How come you didn't? How come you, you rarely show up? Okay, so that's, that's the thing. He says, so these people, these superior people, this is what he's referring to. Remember, these, the list of these people are superior people. Okay, and what they do, superior people, they listen to the Dharma and they shun, meaning that they reflect upon themselves. And when they reflect upon themselves, they woo. You have to reflect upon yourself before you can woo. You have to shun before you can woo. Yes. Um, in this case, it's pronounced xing. Hmm? It's a point to pronounce xing wu. Okay. 
Thank you. Taiwanese person. Can we trust a Taiwanese person to tell us how to pronounce Chinese characters? Huh? Chinese people. Can we trust a Taiwanese person? They call themselves Taiwanese, you know, they don't call themselves Chinese. Can we trust them? The Chinese are all sleeping. Yes, seven. He said, the Chinese say, oh, he's not Chinese. What does he know about Chinese? Yes, seven. Master, where in China was this? Do you know? No, I mean, where in the Sixth, sixth Patriarch? It's at the Da Fan Temple on that particular date. Where it is? I mean, Somewhere like what, what in China. Of, oh, southern China? Could be southern, could be northern. I can't care less. Okay? If you want to know, ask a Chinese person. Don't ask a Vietnamese. <laughs> you should know better. <laughs> How can you trust me? And that's why I just told you, I, I, I'm not sure I can trust the Taiwanese. <laughs> And you ask the Vietnamese of where it is in China, and you, and you think I would buy and you know, would try and try to convince you I know where it is. I don't know where it is, is the answer. I'm sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> yes, uh, in the back there are five. Thank you, Master. So out of all the other country, why Master Xinhua picked the United States as to spread the Chan teaching? because he found uh, the second generation disciples are better than anyone else at the time. And then he also predicted after that, down the road, the better people would be dispersed throughout the globe. It's no longer in the U.S. alone. But at the time, they were in the U.S. Therefore, right now, you have to come to the U.S. for the better teachers. But eventually, down the road, there will be better teachers somewhere else besides the U.S. Okay? Yes? So until then, how many years do you think that will stay in the United States, though? How many years or what? Of, of Chan, great teacher in Chan in the United States. Oh, maybe one or two generations. Okay, thank you. We, we are much faster than before. It depends. It depends on who's going to step up to help the propagation. Because, uh, because the young monks and nuns in China, in, in uh, Korea, and so forth, they don't understand. Uh, they don't understand, in my humble opinion, that the Dharma propagation has to be uh, joint efforts from the lay people and the monks and the nuns, okay? Uh, the lay people have to um, offload the monks from worrying about money. Monks have no business worrying about money. So therefore, their disciples, or Master Shenhua disciples, have to offload that burden. Okay, uh, for it to happen. So it depends on how, uh, how quickly it spreads, depends on how quickly the lay people wake up to that. And you don't need a whole lot of people. The most uh, lay people, they, they make donation, they expect something back in return. 
like the, you go to the bed system, you give a hundred thousand dollars, I'm told, you get to have a seat right next to the Dalai Lama. It's kind of cool. Uh, but that's not enough. <laughs> Only poor people would buy a seat there. <laughs> uh, the rich people are the ones who, who, who propagate, uh, who support the propagation so that proportional to their level of blessings. They not just want, don't want a chair. They want temples, they want acres, they want mountains. So they sing wu, huh? sing. Since the Chinese are so quiet, we have to take the Taiwanese thing for a while because it certainly is better than my Vietnamese thing, okay? But, but it's not permanent by any, and by any means, the Chinese people. Don't get offended, okay? Uh, I'm very malleable. <laughs> I can be bought. <laughs> so sing wu. So, so this, they said, so this is a process where you first awake, you just look at yourself, okay? And woo, here you awaken. So you need to look at yourself before you can awaken. This doesn't mean, it sounds like they listen and they, whoa, they become enlightened. No. Then, then if it's not the case, does this mean this is inaccurate? No, it doesn't. It means that the first objective of his teaching is that it makes you think, reflect upon yourself. Am I enlightened yet? If I'm not enlightened, why not? What am I doing wrong? Hmm? That's what you do. And you, you go along that line, down the road, you awaken. It doesn't mean they awaken immediately. It sounds like, you know, that these Chinese are so incredible. Magistrates wait, magistrate wait, the official Taoist lay people became enlightened just like that. And that's why I said, seriously? <laughs> Is that easy? How come I struggle so much? Huh? Because I listened to it too. I read over it over and over and over, and I didn't sing ooh at all. <laughs> so what's wrong with me? Should I quit? Because I'm not good enough. No. The, the, the thing here, this is a far highest thing because he, he did it wrong, recorded it wrong. Uh, that's why I have to explain this. Sing Wu here is that you reflect upon yourself, you keep on reflecting yourself, then someday you, that's what happens. So all these people are guaranteed to sing Wu. And it happened at various levels. Yeah, look at, look at Xian Tung, how excited she is after he explains. Oh, oh, oh. If it's going to take that long, I'm going <laughs> to, you know, what's the hurry, right? Right, Xian Tung, huh? What's the hurry? Uh. Uh. And let's try to wrap it up because we don't want to go back here again. Two more slides, is it okay? I'm a little bit going a little bit over. Sutra text, together they made obeisance and exclaimed with delight, good indeed, who have thought that in Ling Nan a Buddha would appear in the world? You cut it off already? This is the typical, my disciple decided what I, what I can do, what I cannot do. Okay, last slide of chapter two. Okay, and that's it. Okay. You have to ask questions. Yeah, go ahead. Ask. Master, not a question. It's just a comment. Lingnan is uh, also, I think, part of Vietnam is Lingnan. So 
uh, if he want to find Ta Phan Temple, he can go to Vietnam to find it. Thank you very much. Uh, so together, they made obeisance, exclaimed with delight, so they're very grateful. And the obeisance here is not, uh, is not just a formality, okay? But they actually were grateful and they have total trust in the master. They're grateful for the gift, the Dharma gift, and exclaim with delight. They said, good indeed. Hmm. Who would have thought that in Lingnan, a Buddha would appear in the world? And literally, I feel he's the Buddha. A Buddha did appear in the world, in China. Okay. Oh, and this is important because you believe, you buy into this because these people were there, thought so. Okay, then, then this Dharma he teaches is really highest level of Mahayana, highest level of certain teaching. Certain teaching has many levels too. Okay, but this is high level. So, so finally, you know, final comment is like, you know, you, we know, we know that, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, the certain teaching is a cream of the, of the Mahayana teaching. So that's why in the future, uh, I hope that uh, we have the opportunities to allow some of you, lay people, left form people, whatever, uh, the ability to go into uh, a seclusion like Master Shihua's tradition, and you will practice the various mind, uh, certain teaching, and then you investigate you know, the certain teaching, such as uh, this particular sutra and uh, and uh, Shrangma Sutra or Avatamsaka Sutra. I don't think Dharma and Flower Sutra. You need to worry about that. Shrangama Sutra, Avatamsaka Sutra, and in particular, if you really, really are hardcore, Yung Ming Shou, who is a transformation body of Amitabha Buddha, he left behind three uh, teachings in Chinese. It's not translated because none of them dare touch it. I would not dare touch it myself. Too advanced. Uh, and this is where you people can then go into seclusion and study that. If you feel that uh, Masha Shehua's Dharma is too low, my Dharma is too low, that's what you can do for yourself. Hmm? All right. Uh, the Chinese uh, teaching is very, very advanced, folks. We, unfortunately, even though the current crop of Chinese are not good enough, but I hope that uh, that you Chinese people or people who want to learn Chinese uh, language, uh, you will uh, go back to the Chinese teaching because it's not translatable to us in English. We're not good enough. And they have a wealth of advanced teachings in Chinese that we don't. Okay, and that's why I feel that in Master Shinhua's vision, he said it's being transmitted back okay, to the rest of the world, to China, to Vietnam, to Korea, and so forth. Uh, but that's only for, uh, for the, um, the, uh, to bring it to expand it and bring it to the next level. But the ultimate level is that you have to go back to the teachings from the Buddhas themselves, not us. We're not Buddhas. We're only the bridge to them. Okay? Thank you, everyone. Next time I do chapter three, if you're interested. <laughs>